You often give advice to young adults to help them avoid some of the pitfalls of life. Any advice for those of us who are 40 plus who have already faltered? Look, first Graham, this is Graham. Everybody who is 40 plus has already faltered, but, but I'm presuming that you mean faltered in a manner that appears to you to be above, above the average, right? Well, what I would really recommend is I think that you should, if you haven't already, you should go do the future authoring program and maybe the past authoring program too, because you should figure out exactly how you faltered. Like what exactly did you do wrong by your own, by your own analysis, right? I'm not saying, well, what social rules did you break? Although that's not a bad initial guideline. It's like, so in the self-authoring suite, there's a past authoring module and it asks you to break your life into seven epochs and then to consider the emotionally significant or practically significant events within each epoch and to detail out their emotional nature and their consequences and so on. And one of the things you might want to figure out is, well, when you say that you faltered, like, what do you mean exactly? And I mean exactly. Go over your life with a fine-tooth comb. This is what Alexander Solzhenitsyn did, by the way, in the Gulag, before he wrote the Gulag Archipelago. He went over his life and said, okay, well, like, where did I go wrong? What did I squander? What mistakes did I make? And what did I do right? So that you can orient yourself now. And then you want to think, and this is why we built the Future Authoring Program, well, look, you got 40 years left, man. So what do you want them to be like? So what do you want to aim at? You know, at least... How are you going to minimize the misery if, if, if nothing else? And so you need a plan. And then what you need to do is to figure out how to work day to day so that you incrementally approach that plan. So I have another chapter in this new book um, called Compare Yourself to Who You Were Yesterday Rather Than to Who Someone Else Is Today. And that's really a useful psychological stance for someone who's 30 and over in particular. To 20-year-olds can still kind of compare themselves to other 20-year-olds because all 20-year-olds in some way are the same. But 40-year-olds are really different from each other and so are 30-year-olds for that matter. So you might think, okay, well, here, here's, a, here's a meditative strategy for, for ceasing to falter. You could wake up in the morning or you could do this at night before you go to bed and you could think, okay, look, I want to structure my day tomorrow so that when, I, when I'm done with the day, my life is in slightly better order than it was when I woke up this morning. It's just slightly better because incremental progress is massively, massively effective because it bears uh, exponential fruit, uh, just like a bank account. Um, compounds. Incremental progress compounds with time. So you can get up in the morning and you can think, okay, there's some things in my life that I could put in order today. They're usually things you don't want to do, as I mentioned earlier. What could I do today that would help put my life in order that I would do? And you have to ask yourself. You can't tell yourself. You have to ask yourself, what would you do? And then maybe you have to say, well, or maybe you have to say, under what conditions would I be willing to do something to put my life in further order today? What little reward would I need to give myself? And these have to be questions. You can't like take out the whip and boss yourself around because you'll find that you're a terrible master and a worse slave. And so you can get a long ways if you look low enough. Uh, one of the things Carl Jung said, which I really liked, was that modern people don't see God because they don't look low enough. They don't have the humility. Now, you said that you have already faltered, so it sounds like you've got the humility already intact. So I would say... Think about what you want. Think about what you know around you isn't set right. Because you'll know. Make a list of things that are around you that aren't right. And then start thinking about small things you can do, like trivial things that even a fool like yourself could manage that would orient you in the right direction and help straighten out your life. And try that for a year before you decide that you're a failure, you know? Because you'll find that if you put that into practice for a year, that things will be a lot better. And like I said, you got 40 years left, so you're not, you're not done yet, man. So the other thing I would say too is, it isn't exactly that I would say forgive yourself because, you know, that's just a cliche, but I would say that once you've decided once you, what you've done wrong and you've put into practice some, some strategies to rectify that, that don't you don't have to beat yourself any more than is necessary for you to learn which is a good rule of thumb with regards to treating yourself and also to treating other people 